Isaac sold in that land, and that year he, first, he harvested a hundred times, as much as he sold, he, he had sown, because the Lord blessed him. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, this morning we come before thee with thanksgiving in our heart, Jehovah God. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you for the week that has been Jehovah God. We want to thank you because this far, Lord, you've been faithful unto us, O Jehovah Mighty. And now, Lord, this morning, Lord, we come unto your sanctuary, dear Father, just to tell you that you and you alone is our God. The Lord, you've been our strength. The Lord, you've been our hope, mighty Redeemer. We thank you because one thing we know, O Lord, we cannot be without you, O God. And thus we want to submit unto your all, unto, unto your will, Jehovah God, surrendering all unto you, O God. But one thing, Lord, again, we know is that in your faithfulness, we've not been faithful unto you, O God. And that's, Lord, we want to to pray, O oh God, that you may forgive our sins, dear Lord, that you may cleanse us with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that, Lord, as we partake in this fellowship, Jehovah Mighty, we shall be acceptable unto you, my Father and my God. Father, we pray for this service, O oh God, how we pray that, Lord, your presence shall walk with us, dear Lord, that today will not just be a day like any other, dear Lord, but it will be a day, Lord, that you speak to your people in a special way, Jehovah God. Guide us through the service, O oh my Father and my God, because Lord, we only trust on you, Jehovah Mighty. Thank you because you've been faithful this far. We worship your holy name. We bless your holy name. For this, we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us. Read us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For there is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, welcome to today's service. Welcome. Tell them they are also looking great. We want to welcome you to today's service. Feel at the feet of God. Those who are joining us, even from... Our other channels will welcome you to today's service. Praise and worship. Praise God. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. There is one thing in the house of the Lord. In the, in the book of Psalms 117, we are reminded why we praise the living God. One thing that his love, his love is unveiling to us. Then his love, his faithfulness endures forever. Praise the living God. Amen. His love endures. Therefore, we have a reason to praise who? The living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We gave one of my copy, Jamin.
worthy. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all worship, dear God. This morning we bow before you, O oh Lord, and worthy as we are, our Father, acknowledging your greatness, acknowledging your goodness, acknowledging your faithfulness, our God, for you have remained Jehovah God, our Father. Glory and honor to you only, our God. This morning, dear Lord, we humble before thee. We are sinners in your presence, dear Lord. We pray and seek your forgiveness. Individually and collectively, dear Father, we pray that you may have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins, Jehovah God. Cleanse us with that precious blood that was shed on Calvary for our sake, O oh God. So that, Father, our supplications this morning may be acceptable to you, our Father. 
We are thankful to you, dear God, for who you are in our lives and for so much that you have done for us. You've given us so much, dear Father, that we cannot count, we cannot tell. We are thankful for the gift of life this morning. Thankful for the gift of good health. Thankful that, dear Father, you have provided for all our needs. Lord, we are gathered this morning in your sanctuary because, dear Lord, you have given us this chance and this opportunity. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, dear Father. Glory and honor to your holy name. Father, we are thankful even for the many places of worship that your people are gathered this morning to just cry to you, to just praise you, to just honor you, O oh Father. For we acknowledge that Jehovah God, you are our Father. We bless your name this morning and we remain grateful to you, our Father. Lord, we come uh, with different needs, dear Lord. We want to uplift the body of Christ this morning unto you, dear Father. Lord, you have set us apart, O oh God. You bought us with your precious blood, O oh Father. And therefore we stand and we sit with authority, knowing that, Father, you have given us the authority to talk to you, to speak to you, and to plead for the needs of your people. We are thankful for such an opportunity this morning. And we know, dear Lord, you are listening. Dear Lord, you can see. You can see the cry in the hearts of your people. You have seen the needs of your people, oh God. And we are thankful to you, dear Father, for you have not abandoned us. But your hand is at work. And you are doing great things, dear Father. We therefore pray, dear Father, that this day, you will use your servants to speak to your people, oh God. And when we hear your word, we pray that we shall not harden our hearts, dear God, but we shall do and act according to your will, our Father. This morning we pray, dear Father, as we also lift our country into you. We are thankful for this beautiful nation that you gave us. We are thankful for the peace that we continue to enjoy. Lord, you've blessed us in many areas. There has been rain and there's plenty of food, dear God. This is your doing, dear Father, and we remain grateful to you, dear Father. We also pray and commit to the many areas where there, there is no peace and your people are suffering, dear Father. You are the only one who can come through. You are the only one who can intervene, our Father. We therefore pray for all the areas where we need peace, the Lord you're going to intervene. We commit our 47 counties to you and the different needs of your people in those areas. And we pray, dear Father, that you are coming through and you are coming to bless us, dear Father. We commit our leaders to you this morning our president, our deputy, and all those in authority. Father, we commit them to your able hands. We know on their own, they cannot. Their wisdom is not enough. Their plans are not enough. All they do is not enough. But, they are, but Lord, we come before you, for we commit them unto your able hands. And we are praying, dear Lord, that you will use them, dear Father, to come through for our nation. There are many areas where we need you. There are many needs that we have in this nation, and it is only you and your hand that can reach them, O oh God. We pray, dear Father, that you will intervene, dear Father, and our, our country will remain peaceful. Our country will remain uh, blessed, O oh God, for we know and believe that we are blessed because, dear Father, you have blessed us. We, uh, we come against all the vices in this nation. Lord in heaven, when things are not going according to your will, you know and you can see. We pray and ask that, dear Lord, you're going to intervene and you will do well for us to the glory and honor of your name. We are gathered this morning in our sanctuary on this day that is set apart by our church where we are raising awareness about the vices of substance abuse in our nation and in the world. Dear Father, we seek your mercy this morning. Lord, we know you have seen the affliction of your people. 
at the back streets, in the trenches, in the homes, in the villages, people are languishing because of these vices. The different addictions, the substance abuses that has really been difficult for our people, Lord, you have seen. We come before you this morning, for we know, dear Father, that it is only you, it is only your hand that can lift these, our brothers, can lift these, our sisters, can lift these, our husbands and our wives, our children who are battering these addictions. Father, we come before you. We seek your mercy, O oh God, and we ask, dear Lord, that you will come through for us. There are many organizations and even government that is doing their part to intervene. But we know they can only go so far. We therefore pray that, Lord, this morning you will see the cry in our hearts. As we cry out for those who are battling these vices and ask, dear Lord, that you will reach them, that you will lift them, that you will deliver them, that, dear Lord, you will unyoke them from these yokes of slavery, that they may come to you. We know you love, the, you love us all. You love them as well. They are your children. We are your children, dear God, and we need you. Thank you, Lord, for your coming through. Father, hear our prayer this morning, and may you come through for all of us. We are thankful, dear God, for the opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, we come with expectant hearts, hoping and expecting to hear from you. Lord, prepare our hearts so that even as the speaker of the word comes to speak to us, your word will find a place in our hearts and in our lives. And as we say, Dear Lord, that this is a spring of transformation. Lord, lives are going to be transformed to bring glory and honor to your holy name. Father, in your presence this morning, we all come with different needs. We pray, dear Lord, that Father, you who searches our hearts, we see all these needs, dear God, and you will come through for each and every one of us. We ask the Lord you may strengthen us. Strengthen our faith, dear God. As we continue serving you, dear Lord, may it have a difference. And may we be used of you to bring glory and honor to your holy name. We surrender all to you and pray, dear Father, that in all things, may your will and your will only be done. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and give thanks. Let's appreciate the praise and worship. Thank you so much. May God continue increasing you as you honor him with your voices. Thank you. Uh, today is Drugs and Substance Awareness Day in our church. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you affected? Or do you know someone? That it is time we engage a higher gear in prayer because there is hope in Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, at this time, we are going to listen to a presentation from Umoja PCA Academy. Please come forward.
morning, church. God is good. My name is Elsie Natasha, and I would like to present a narrative on drugs and substance abuse from PCO Moja Junior Secondary Grade 7. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, old and young, in the school of Tumaini was a brilliant, active, self-driven, determined, and talented girl known as Livo Mbolo. Livo Mbolo had the beauty of a fairy pageant floating for a first time on the tide, and as the bow of the Myrobalan in springtime. At her prime, that is standard eight, she befriended Jogua Washiori, who posed as a perfect revision partner. And be knows to many, he was a drug peddler who didn't mind recruiting other young people into drug abuse. Poor Livombolo. She didn't know that she was a prey about to be feasted down by a fierce lion. Duniambaya, 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 duniambaya. Small friendly gifts and elaborate revision sessions built Livombolo's trust in Joguawa Shiori. She slowly consumed bang, they call it weed, and cut, they call it jabba, all this in cookies and lollies. Days passed, and our auspicious Livo could not do without Washiori's cookies and tantalizing juices, laced with cocaine, they call it unga. Soon, she was given the real stuff. She was over the moon. Pombe cigara. Siwezi wacha hata ni ngane Pombe sigara Siwezi wacha hata ni ngane Livombolo jakrachonyo got dani, dani, dani Her performance deteriorated Her stunning beauty faded away and shined on its way she became a loggerhead with her parents and teachers. She smelled like an abandoned pit latrine full of maggots, and her choice of music shifted from urban gospel to Gengeton Generation 1. When the teachers realized what was happening, Livombolo Jakrachonyo was not the only one. Many other people had been recruited into helpless drug abuse, mandrax, cuber, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, and bang, they all had to attend rehabilitation sessions. Woi shivala shikalu hanile, ndahole mbwena shivala shikalu hanile, woi mama, woi shivala shikalu hanile, ndahole mbwena shivala shikalu hanile. It is important that we learn from this experience to save ourselves and those close to us from this monster of drug abuse. Stay safe, say no to drugs and substance. How much would you do would chak chak if I would chak chak would? Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. That's our PCA Umoja Academy. And we are very much proud of it. And from what you've seen, it is your choice. It should be your choice for those who have small children. Let's see you there. It's time for the choir. King of Zion, Judah's lion, reign, Jesus reign. King of Zion, King of Zion, Judah's lion. Jesus. 
Lord Church. Praise the Lord. Let me hear, let me hear some strong, stronger voices. Praise the Lord. No, that is it. Um, that young lady, um, that was very touching. That was very touching. You know, we are living in days of great addictions, substance addictions, including <laughs> internet. Um, we are seeing as a choir, God is able to take all those addictions if we give them to him. Atwa, atwa, um, mizigoyote, including those addictions that we are battling with, he is able to take them. Amen.
we can do better than that. Let's appreciate our choir. Thank you so much, choir. We bless the Lord for you. It is time for intimations. Good morning, church. 
Bona Sefire. Amen. It's good to see all of us in church today. We want to thank God for each one of us and for giving for him giving us a chance to come and worship him together. I want to take this time to welcome all of us, and especially our visitors. If there is anyone who is visiting with us today, it's your first time, or you've taken long before worshiping here, uh, kindly stand up so that you can recognize you. Any visitor in our midst? Yes, there is a visitor choir. Let's uh, welcome our visitor. Thank you very much and most welcome. Um, and we do receive your greetings, like they have said. And in case you're going to remain here, you can also see the elders who can guide you, uh, but also go with our greetings uh, and take them back to your local church. My name is uh, Dedan Murioke, and I'm born again. I love the Lord. The announcements we have are as follows. One uh, is that the pastoral visits um, are still going on. And in the coming week, the schedule um, is as follows, on 27th of June, it will be E District, on 29th, it will be AF, and on 30th of June, it will be G District. Uh, so can you take note of that, and those who are impacted, or those who will be in that schedule, um, prepare yourselves for the same. Our prayer and fasting period of 21 days, we will start on Monday uh, next week, at is 3rd of July, uh, to 23rd of July. And we are all asked to prepare for the same uh, uh, prayer free, and more details will be shared with us uh, next Sunday. Been announcing about a training that is going to be done by the Life Ministry, and this is meant to start on Monday, the 24th of July. And for those who have registered, we want to thank you for that. And registration is still going on until 10th of July. Uh, through Gladys Kinajui. Uh, Gladys, you can stand um, so that people can know you. That is uh, Gladys. And um, you're asked to um, uh, please see her and register before 10th of July for proper uh, planning um, and also making the payments that you allow the materials to be bought in good time that will be used for the training. Today, like we have already seen, is um, our Drug Awareness Day. Um, and after this, uh, I'll call upon Ruth to come and make um, uh, a small presentation um, uh, on the same. One of us, uh, Beth Jerry Kibathi of Inaco North, of Inaco West, sorry, district, has lost her mother. Uh, prayers and meeting will be held here in church uh, hall from Tuesday uh, on Tuesday, uh, 27th, 27th of June, from 6 p.m., the burial will be on 30th of June, Friday, at Nyahururu, and we are asked to pray with that family during this uh, difficult time. We also reminded that there are those who have been confirmed. There are those of you whose uh, children or your children have been baptized. You are uh, requested by the evangelist to pick uh, the baptism and confirmation cards uh, from his uh, office. Please ensure you do that uh, because you don't want to keep cards um, that belong to you uh, for long. There will be a finance meeting uh, on Saturday, uh, 1st July uh, at 7 a.m. and followed uh, by an LCB meeting at 10 a.m. And the members involved are asked to take note and prepare uh, for the same. And finally, there's an, uh, an appreciation card from the Mathenges family. They are sending this to us uh, for the support that you give them, your presence, your material support, 
uh, when they lost their loved one. Uh, may you uh, receive those appreciations. May God bless you so much. I call upon Ruth to have a talk. Praise God, church. My name is Ruth. I'm born again, and Christ is my savior. I'm here to create some awareness on drug abuse or substance abuse. And um, at my capacity, I'm a mental health advocate. So when we are talking of substance abuse, I would say somehow I have a first-hand information. And what I want to say is this. With substance abuse, we look at it, uh, it's a, an international problem, national problem, and most of the uh, ways or strategies to help, they come from the government. And so you find us, as uh, families, individuals, we look up to the government to help us. So we need to go back to basics because most of the times the government is not able to go to the end. They start a program, it doesn't go as maybe required because of failures here and there. But there are a few things we can do when we go back to basics. And going back to basics, I'll touch on two things. We all know the impact of these substances. If you are not the one affected directly, indirectly you are, including those babies who are unborn. That is the magnitude of this problem. So it's a very important pro pro uh, problem to us. It's important because it has solutions. And today we look at the basics of these solutions. We go back to our families. Sometimes, you may look for, a, 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 when a problem happens, you may look for a problem very far, but the problem actually starts where you are. So if we would look at our families, um, we have TVs, we have social media, that is where the, the kids uh, start familiarizing mostly with alcohol. They see what is being advertised or any other, even the cigars and everything. They see them. In the social media, they are seeing the card, people doing all sorts of things with the substance. So they learn. They learn through seeing or observing an emulation. Chances are if these kids keep on seeing and seeing and seeing those things, and most of the times the parents are not there to guide, they will think it's cool. So in one way or another, when they reach a certain age, nine years going onwards, chances are they will start thinking about it. And remember when they learn something, it sticks in their mind. They have a, a way that it sticks in their mind because even you, you can remember many things that happened to you as a kid. So chances are they will go back. So as parents, it's important we educate our children from those early ages. Number two, the home environment is also another thing we can work with. You find most of the homes, they are not um, secure for our children. Parents are sometimes abusing the substance themselves, alcohol being number one and all the others. So you find that home there is no um, security and there is no harmony. So these children start getting stressed. Some even develop some mental illnesses because of that as a, at a very, very early age so that when they are growing up because of what they are experiencing at their home and with the stress and they don't know who to tell because their parents are the ones who are doing these things, they also become, they are predisposed to abusing the substance. The other thing is when um, the parents themselves are using the substance. Even if I come here and tell the children that it's bad, the, the parents are using and they adore their parents, so there is no way I can tell them it's bad. So as parents, we need to be the role model for our children. Let us not use them when our children are seeing if you must use, because there are those who are already in the addiction stage. If you must use, don't use when your children are there. If you must come home drunk, come when the children are asleep, so that they don't see. 
because when they see, they learn through seeing and they emulate. So let's make our home environment safe so that we also get our children to feel safe because they become very vulnerable when they, they reach teenage because of the experiences they go, they went through when they were children. So these are some of the things we can work with at home and especially the education. We are living like this Moja estate, I think there is a pub in every area. So you need to educate your children. They are seeing these people entering their big cars parked there and those people are there. Young, beautiful girls and handsome gentlemen are entering in those pubs. You need to talk to them about it. At a small age, let them understand what it is. That is not a good habit. But when you just assume, they will say, oh, my parents are not talking about it. So it's cool and they will go with that. So at our home, let us work so much on it because it will help us. The other thing is, we have personal experiences. Some people go through very, very, very many difficulties. When they are young, as small children, what we call the adverse childhood experiences, as teenagers, even as young adults. And what we are seeing these days, these people, they keep these things. They get very distressed. So what do they do? They have no one to turn to. They turn to the alcohol. Most of the times. And by the time they are thinking that they are solving their problems because their problems now, they are not so much because of the, the impairment by the substance, they get hooked into the substances. Actually what the, 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 the student has talked about from PCA Academy is a reality. You, you think you as you are safe with her or him at home, but remember, these children also process things differently. The problems they are going through, even us as adults, the problems we went through as children, we process differently. And we, have, we find ourselves using this substance. So if you are able to get help through problems that you find they, they give you psychological distress, before they develop to mental illnesses, kindly seek help. Seek help, we have private and public institutions where you can get help. Process all these issues you feel are a burden to you. Be helped by a professional to see the reality, to see the other options that you can use apart from the substance, which is the easier way out of the problem. But it comes up with another problem. So that is very, very important. The other thing we can do is um, we need to seek help. If you are affected, seek help. If your family is affected, if a husband is uh, abusing substance, you find the wife is affected, the children are affected, we need to seek help. We need to seek help for the husband and we need to seek help for the family. So we need to support one another as a community so that we are able to work together to help out those who are suffering and those who are in need of help. Then the other thing you find, we tend to sideline the people who are struggling with alcohol or with substance abuse. Before you condemn, that person has a story. That person has a story. I'm talking that because I talk to them almost every day. They have a story and they are unable to cope. So don't condemn. Love them with the love of Christ. And with your love, they are able to change their mind and see this is not the only way out. I can talk about it and I can get helped. So that um, we, we, we work together. Because when they are affected, we are affected. Some, uh, the problems is too much that it affects even a whole plot. It will affect a whole family, even extended. So it's important we help. Then as a church, there are a few things we can do. We can commit to pray. We've been um, uh, encouraged to pray. And as we go to the 21 days of prayer and fasting, please let this be an important item. Because as I'm telling you, this problem is bigger. It's bigger than we are told even in the media. It's quite bigger and deeper. So let us pray about it. Also as a church, let's support. Let's support those who are afflicted instead of talking about them. Let's support them and love them and evangelize to them also to know there is a way out. The other thing we can do as a church community, let's uh, support. There are those who have gone through rehabilitation and they are among us. We can help them by supporting them 
with a support group. Support group where they meet, they encourage one another, they share what they are going through. And when it's a day like today, when we want to, uh, to create the awareness, these people are going to help us because they've been there and they know the reality. So it will work well with our youth and with the people around here. So that is something we can think in the long term to do that because in some other churches they are doing it and actually it's having a very good impact. So I think I'll end there because I only had five minutes and mine is to say let's work together. It's a problem that has solutions and it can be worked out and people can live better lives. God bless you. Thank you, Ruth. It's time to pray, to pray for our children. Children? Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. I'm born again this morning. It's a beautiful day. Um, our reverend is handling the youth service because of Holy Communion together with a few of our elders. That's why he's not here. And so he brings his greetings and love. Have you accepted them? Amen. God bless you so much. Today we have a guest with us uh, coming to us from uh, PCA Thicker Road Trinity Church. She's not new to us. Uh, Rachel Kimani was in uh, PCA Unity before and now she has migrated to Thicker Road. And so she's the one going to, to, is going to bring us the word of the Lord today. So we want to appreciate her Umoja's time. Let's clap for her and to the Lord as well. And tell her welcome. Uh, and now you will uh, help us with the prayer for the children. But first we do the, the Apostles' Creed. You can choose a child of your choice the way you want to. And then they can come. It's, it's her who is uh, choosing. Wow, I'll go for this one we sing. Oi, teacher, please. Please. <laughs> My name is Jason Gishago. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered an atrocious pilot, was crucified dead and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. I sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there I shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the salvation of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us appreciate him well. Thank you so much. He's just a leader. Shall we pray? Indeed, God Almighty, we want to thank you for this particular hour. God, thank you for giving us a chance to bring our children to the sanctuary. Thank you, Lord, for you have shown us the right way to direct them and to lead them, O oh Father, as parents and as guardians. Dear Lord, at a time like this, there is a lot that is happening. God Almighty, including the awareness that we are receiving today, and Father, we want to declare to our young ones and our children that these are the fruit of our womb. And as the Bible says, our Lord Jesus, that we train the child according to the ways of the Father. That even the moment they will grow up, Jehovah Father, they will never divert from it. We want to declare these are blessed of you, Father, as they go out and as they come in. They belong to the flock and they belong to the body of Christ. We speak our word of our Father that wherever they will go, even at their teenage uh, life and youth life, Father, the grace that is taking them through to this particular time and uh, age will also take them through, Father. We want to declare they are blessed of you, Lord Almighty. No one can cast them, Jehovah Father. They are under the protection of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus 24-7. They are under the protection of your kingdom, Jehovah Father. 
We want to say thank you for being the gift to us, O oh Lord. We are sincerely honored by you. And therefore, Lord, even as they leave to go to their classes, Lord, we pray that they will be taught and they will understand and they will remain focused to the kingdom agenda. We want to thank you and we want to declare as parents, as a church, and as authority of a them, Jehovah Father, they will never get lost, my Father. They will remain in you and abide in you. And this is the declaration and prayer we make in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's time for the readings. Yeah. Good morning, church. Yeah, good morning, church. Morning, church. Um, my name is Grace Kitonga. I'm saved this morning. Our reading comes from the book of Genesis 26, from 1 to 11, but the whole reading will come from the Genesis 26. Genesis 26, 1 to 11. If you are there, we, can, we read. Isaac lived at Gerah. There was another famine in Lud besides the early one during the time of Abraham. Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of Philistines, at Gerar. The Lord had appeared to Isaac and had said, do not go to Egypt, stay in this land, where I tell you to stay, live here, and I will be with you and bless you. I'm going to give all this territory to you and to your descendants. I will keep the promise I made to your father Abraham. I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, and I'll give them all this territory. All the nations will ask me to bless them as I had have blessed your descendants. Five, I will bless you because Abraham obeyed me and kept all my laws and commands. So Isaac lived in Gerah. When the men there asked about his wife, he said that she was his sister. He would not admit that she was his wife because he was afraid that the men there would kill him to get Rebecca, who was very beautiful. Eight, when Isaac had been there for some time, King Abimelech looked down from his widow and saw Isaac and Rebecca making love. Abimelech sent for Isaac and said, so she's your wife. Why did you say she was your sister? He answered, I thought I would be killed if I said she was my wife. 10, what have you done to us? Abimelech said, one of my men might easily have slept with your wife and you'd uh, have been res responsible for our guilt. 11 and 8, Abimelech warned all the people, anyone who will treat this man or his wife will be put to death. And the reading continues from 12. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Mary Madenge taking you through the second reading. We continue from verse 12. Isaac sowed seed in that land, and that year he harvested a hundred times as much as he had sown, because, because the Lord blessed him. He continued to prosper and became a very rich man, because he had many herds of sheep and cattle and many servants. The Philistines were jealous of him. So they filled in all the wells which the servants of his father Abraham had dug while Abraham was alive. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, leave our country. You have become more powerful than we are. So Isaac left and set up his camp in the valley of Gerah, where he had stayed for some time. 
He dug once again the wells which had been dug during the time of Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped after Abraham's death. Isaac gave the wells the, na the same names that his father had given them. That is the end of our reading. Thank you. Thank you, our readers. M Mr. Mwangi, kindly. Shall we be upstanding? The great physician now is near, the sympathizing Jesus. The great physician now is near, the sympathizing Jesus. has given unto us. Good morning, church. Maybe you have not even said hi to the person next to you. I have not said that you shake heart. Can you tell the neighbor, good morning? And if you can prolong, appreciate how they are looking. If you can prolong, appreciate the how they are looking. It is very therapeutic. My name is Rachel Kemani, I'm born again. Christ is the Lord and the Savior of my soul. I'm happy to be back uh, at Umoja. It is not my very first time because uh, I've been somehow a member, but by the grace of God, we have shifted with my family at Thika Road. We are now out of Eastlands, and we thank God. I am a member of PCA Trinity, Thika Road Trinity Church. That's where we settled, along the Kamakis area. Hallelujah. And when I say Kamakis, you all click and subscribe. I am happy to be here today by the invitation, through the invitation of Omchungaji, the chairman of the church, the leadership of this church. Let me say that I am really honored to be here. And because chairman, I've been taught honor. Allow me to honor the grace we have today, Mrs. Mchungaji, kindly be upstanding. Praise the Lord. Just with the church. Thank you so much. 
have decided to honor her in the absence of Mchungaji, who is having another service, and we appreciate you so much. And church today is a very special day because we are dealing with the theme of our ear, unblocking the wells. Are we together? And I know a lot have been said concerning unblocking the wells, which is good and true as well. But as I was going through this scripture, the Lord gave me a revelation of just one item that we will be handling today based on that particular title. And I believe by the end of the service, we'll be in a position to gauge or rather to weigh where we are. Because I came to understand Isaac, for him to attain to that particular point of undoing the wells that the father had already done, he had some backup, mark the word backup, that could push him to finish the work. Are we together? And I came to understand it was not a matter of just waking up in the morning and feeling that I am Isaac who is enough to go and confront Philistines and do, and do the wealth. No. It was a process until the success was witnessed. And this particular item that I came across is that an item I am calling favor. Tell your neighbor, we all need favor. It is by the favor of God that put Isaac from point one to point Z until he finished or rather he accomplished uh, the purpose. And before I speak about more about favor, I came to know there are some things we need to remind ourselves before even we declare, oh Lord, I need favor. Father, I pray for favor. We need to understand some very three important items, I mean points. And number one point is that for a destiny to be fulfilled and results to be seen, we must understand time must be dependent. How? Understand the importance of timing. Understand the importance of doing the right thing at the right time, in the right manner, at the right order, with the right people. Are we together? We don't get ignorant to a level whereby we assume that every time is doing time. Even an Englishman say, uh, as the Englishman say that, every time is tea time. But when it comes to the issues to do with attaining our destiny and the results to be manifested, we cannot ignore, ignore, uh, ignore the importance of time. And Job chapter, John chapter number 9 and verses 4, the Bible talks about working for the Lord who called us when it is already day, before the night comes. Are we together? And when you hear the Bible talks of the night, it is the time of issues and problems. So for us to attain our destiny of unblocking the wells, because today, or rather this year, the wells that we are unblocking, they might not be physical wells, but they are the wells, the things that we used to have, the things that we used to enjoy, the favors and the blessings that we used to exercise, but somehow along the way, they were taken away from us, but we need to unblock them. Hallelujah. So point number one, don't we ever ignore the time. We understand the seasons that we are in so that we can avoid unnecessary wastage of energy and resources. Point number two, for our destiny to be fulfilled and results to be seen, there must be men dependent. Hallelujah. For you to attain whatever you need, for Isaac to unblock the well, he needed hard men. For you to attain the blessing that you need, or rather the level that you want to arrive, there must be a help of a man. Hello. 
And here comes to me another song that was sung by a singer, which I respect. But he sang and said that, Hey, musa ine. Tiganana. Tiganana do. I came to ask myself, I will Tigana Nado to work with you. That is a take home. You need people for you to arrive wherever you are going. That is my point. Are we together? You need people, manpower, to tell you businesses nowadays are thriving, but they are thriving when you do A, B, C, D. You need people to tell you, usiku hiyo barabara usipite, pitia hii ufike kwa familia yako ukiwa sawa. You need people to make it in this life. And point number three, we, don't have, we, we understand the world lies under wickedness. Therefore, we cannot escape so long as we are in this world. We cannot escape the wickedness of people who hate us. Hatred is wickedness. There are people in this world who hate you completely. When they are asked, why do you hate Jerry or Karanta? I just hate the way she appears with no reason. Are we together? There are some people who just, when they see you, they switch off. They hate you for nothing. And there are some people who love you so much that even when you stand, my goodness, they like now settle and listen to what you are going to say. Those are the ones that matters a lot. Haters will remain to be haters. Whether you give them your intestines to eat, they will remain haters. Hallelujah. Haters, you cannot take them anywhere. How can Psalms 23 be realized if they are no haters? He lays a table in front of... Ah, can you finish the scripture? He lays the table in front of... So haters must be there for the diet of spiritual life be balanced. But the problem with Christian is the table is laid... The haters are around. Are you supposed to concentrate with the table, whatever is there, or the concentration of haters? Tell your neighbor, concentrate with the table. And give the haters homework to watch as you eat. That is not my message. But don't ignore that the world is full of wickedness. The world is full of people who can give negative report concerning you. They have been asked for the recommendation. They have been asked, how do you see our sister? We want to do favor to her. How do you see her? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. They are called haters. And their ministry is ministry of hating and responsibilities of the devil. And they will remain to be so. So those three things don't you ignore. And therefore, according to those three points, we can now enter majestically to the word favor. The favor that carried Isaac to undo the worst. And we ask ourselves, what exactly is favor? People will tell you so many definitions which are okay. People will tell you unmerited grace. People will tell you so many things. But today, myself, I came to understand it in three dimensions from this scripture. Number one, it has been given unusual kindness. Number two, being given unusual acceptance. And number three, being given unusual access. I've said number one, being given unusual kindness. Go to Exodus chapter number three and verses number 21. You will get it. Go to Ezra seven and six. You will get unusual acceptance. And go read Genesis 39 and verses number four. You will get unusual access. How did Isaac got unusual kindness? Look at this. Abimelech is questioning him. How now then have you decided to lie that Rebecca is your sister, not your wife? Are we together? And this gentleman was like, oh, it's somehow I made a mistake to lie. And he quickly understood 
And he changed the tune. Number 11, so Abimelech charged all his people saying, look at this. He has already, already lied to Abimelech. And out of the lie, because of unusual kindness, Abimelech did not crucify Isaac. Hallelujah. Instead, what did he do? He did what? He said, number 11, so Abimelech said, or rather charged all the people saying, look at this. He who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to, shall surely be put to. According to Lehman's visualizing, Isaac could have been taken to Kamete immediately for lying, true or false. He could be betraying, he could be now in, in, in somewhere whereby everybody doesn't want to see him. But Abimelech showed him unusual kindness and he announced no one should touch this man or his wife. Whereas, if you dare, you will be put to death. Unusual kindness, chart, it is to reach to a level whereby it is indeed People are having something to give you. But in the midst of that group, there arises one individual who has and who knows your weaknesses. Tell your neighbor weaknesses. And he will capitalize on your weaknesses. My goodness. And they are good to do it. They will hit you according to your weakness. A very good example, if you are a single mother, single mothers born at Ukuzwe, for you to be given an access not only even in the church, not here, but elsewhere, for you even to be given a, a leadership position, there must be a scrutinizing committee, an inviting committee. Because of your weaknesses of you are, that is not the point. But in the midst of scrutinizing committee, there comes someone who carries the unusual kindness and declare, however single she is, she is a leader. She is a warrior. She is a woman and a man of faith. We need to show her favor. Tell your neighbor, you need unusual kindness. Let me tell you, the Israelites were not promised an empty lad. Note that. They were promised a lad full of milk and honey, but it was already occupied. Hallelujah. So it took the unusual kindness for them to penetrate and take the lad. Isaac got unusual acceptance. How? Verses number 12 of the same. Then Isaac sowed in the Lord and reaped in the same year hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Look at this church. It was a foreign place. It was a project that was not his. It was his father's project. The Philistines have already occupied the land. They are not people who are willing to practice agriculture. But here comes a boy from nowhere. Are we together? Let me call him a boy from nowhere. And he's having the guts to come and say that now he wants to start farming. And remember, the Bible doesn't say that he only did one season farming. The Bible says he did it when it was drought time, but he harvested hundred folds. Unusual acceptance. Hello. Unatoka kwenu gaturika moranga na neguoto koyore akahana. Teriwa na irovi wa koheberia. And you start owning plot in Nairobi. You from Ugaturi. Ama the wonoi. Mchanga ya Nairobi inakupiga busu. You start owning properties in unusual acceptance. 
when others are rejected by Nairobi Mchanga, you will not be rejected. And this is what is unusual acceptance. You go to a place and you know, this is called Kitui. And the king of Warogi resides here. But you arrive in the midst of Warogi. Unusual acceptance. Hallelujah. You get married in a family where mother-in-law is known as bomb of the year. But with her bombing or not, you arrive and you become the best of that family. Unusual acceptance. Where others are rejected, you become accepted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. This is unusual favor. Where others are rejected in your company, you with your certificate paper, when the degree holders are being disqualified, you with your cert not even certificate, your own gift, because it is gift that took you to that company. In fact, not at the occasion, it was gift. You get unusual acceptance. I always love preaching as an example, because personally, I am a walking faith and miracle. Those are you know me when I was in media. I want to tell you comfortably, I've never gone to any class of mass communication. But it happened somewhere we were in an event. I just took a microphone and said, hallelujah. And my then boss took that. When the event was over, he asked me, Kuda Apa, where have you worked in the media? And I told him, I will start now. I knew he owns one. And I to, no, know how to talk when you come to the digging details. I will start now. I can you listen how? Because I have come into contact with the right person in the media fraternity. And he told me, can you speak 15 minutes, kikuyu words without using vo thou thee? Very well. And that was my interview. Speaking kikuyu for 15? Unusual acceptance doesn't need you to go for Kataroni for 40 days to pray for an open door. It is good you go pray for 40 days if you have the grace. But some things they need you align yourself with well with God. And God allows you to exercise unusual acceptance. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And therefore, Isaac became rich where Philistines are watching. And this is why I've told you, forget about the enemies around the table. Concentrate with what is on the table. There is a Kikuyu song that we used to sing in Oshago. We said, uh, If you concentrate with the enemies, the others will feed on the table and you will go home hungry, speaking in tongues and praising the Lord. And the Lord will remain to be God. Are we together? When you have the unusual acceptance, my sister, my brother, behave well. Tell your neighbor, behave well. Hallelujah. Isaac planted, harvested, and somehow I came to understand who are doing the harvesting and planting? Were well, they not those people that he found there? Ninani waliajili Are we together? Unusual acceptance. You enter in someone's territory and you start ruling with no apology. It is not because of your qualification. It is because of unusual, uh, 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 unusual acceptance that carries favor. And lastly, Isaac obtained unusual, unusual access. How? Verses number 15. Remember the Philistines had stopped all the wells to be done. But here comes Isaac. 15 downwards. He has decided to start out the job with the huntsmen. And one of the wells they did, the Bible records they quarreled. And you know what he did? 
he called it Ezek. Number two well, he, uh, uh, he, he, he unblocked it. They unblocked it. And they, he called it Sitina. Let me tell you, people of God, when the Lord now give you unusual access in someone else's territory, are we together? You align yourself well. Tell your neighbor, you align yourself. Because I told you, don't ignore the weirdness and the wickedness of this world. There are some people that are God called men of influence. The gatekeepers, are we together? You know the problem with Christians is the prayer we love always saying, if the Lord has said yes, nobody can say, nobody can say. But let me tell you, there are men who say no, and the Lord confirm. There are men who say no, and the Lord, they are called gatekeepers. A good example, if Mordecai, him being the watchman, could not allow Haman enter. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together, church? Because he was a, a, a watchman. Are we together? But he allowed Haman to get in. And the king asked who is within the compound. If Mordecai had blocked the gate, I don't know whether he could have been driven via he or horse. Nakutangazo even divyo alie teuliwa nafana. They are men who are called gatekeepers, men of power. Not unless you make peace with this generation, my friend. You can knock the door for many years. A good example. If right now you want to see on a Diga present, our own MP Moreidi Mweje, will you walk to his office majestically without apology? Talk to me. There is a gang of dark, tall men with shades, black one. Not unless you make peace with the gatekeepers when you have unusual access. You cannot go and tell them I was given appointment by an MP. They will tell you, that is it. But when it comes to this office, I am guarding the national government. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you another example because it's like you're not getting that one. Let me just now narrow it down. Our own Madam Rachel Ruto, to send me a mengia service up, isn't it? And because chairman is here and their elders, definitely they will usher her in. But let me tell you, even wherever she'll be seated, there are some funny, be some funny, funny guys just around the area, funny, funny ones. They never laugh. They never lift up their hands as we worship. Are we together? They never move, move any howling, but they are there. You know what? She has come to the authority of Presbyterian Church, but above Presbyterian Church, she's carrying the authority of Kenya government. So the guys are not guarding the Presbyterian Church. They are guarding the property of government of Kenya. Tell your neighbor, you need unusual access. She diakoni madharawe hawa watu. Upate secretary wa boss, unataka kumuongelesha vibaya na unataka boss. Wacha ni kuambie, utapanda fifth floor, hakaja kuambia boss hayuko. Utagong kwa shock, upate boss hayuko, ukuje umenyenyekea. Hello? Kwa ni boss hakuwa? Are we together church? When we get unusual access... We need to align very well with these gatekeepers because blessings and favors are released. The problem is the gatekeeper. You do not know what to deal with this gatekeeper. Presbyterians, if you want to become a mchungazi and you went for interview, watch a kizungu nyingi. Lainisha maneno na hawa wase. Hawa. Hawa wanaeza tia saeni moja. Uingie kula unataka ama upige maktaimi ya kaingine kuminatano hapa. Diyo doda uga. What are the keys to activate favor? Number one key, honor. I am now waiting up because of our time. Number one key, honor. Learn to give honor to the authority, to the graces that the Lord places to us, to the seniors. And take this, the grace that you don't honor 
cannot work on you. Hallelujah. The anointing that you despise cannot bless you. Are we together? Learn to give honor to who deserve honor. That woman that showed you how to go to get comba and search for chiffony tops, and she just took hand, you hand, and she took you around that area, and she introduced you to the best suppliers. And right now, because you may shoot, you don't see her as a person. Come on, just learn to honor that old woman or that old man. She birthed you into business. Tell your neighbor, honor is important than prayer and fasting. Honor is important than prayer and fasting. In fact, it is biblical. Honor your father and this father and mother is anybody, whoever brought you into this world physically or whoever introduced you to whatever you are driving in. Honor is very important. Number two, integrity. Go read verses number nine of Genesis 16. I mean, of, of, of verses number nine of Genesis 12. Go read Proverbs 27. The righteous man walks in his honor and in integrity, and that his, their children thrive and prosper. Some of us are tested with just simple things, even in our offices. We are tested our integrity with just minor things. You know, like what? Taking back the change from your, to your boss. Unono kitumwa maziwa na miya ofisini. Your integrity is tested kurudisha hiyo mashirigi na risiti ya naivas. Hapo ndipo integrity yako hupimwa. Mana bingu inaelewa hata ukitumwa nini. Wewe change unasemanga mungu wa mekuja ni meona ya basi jioni. Na yo bingu inasema oyo wana kwedaga abarari yo. Integrity is too low. Number three. The power of relationship. Ask your neighbor, who are your friends? When God wants to bless people or other individuals, God uses men. As I said, never ignore that we are living in a world full of men. And therefore, church, for us to access this favor, may we learn to invest in quality relationships that are worthy to keep. How? Mark 2, 3 to 5. You know all the story of the four men who identified one of their friends is sick and Jesus is preaching. Are we together? And every corner is fully packed. Nowhere to pass, nowhere to get in or to get out. But they understood one thing. The congregation is only seated and standing. Nobody is at the rooftop. Hallelujah. They got a revelation. Are we together? And the Bible says they brought down their friend on a mat. When Jesus saw the faith of the friends, tell your neighbor, not the faith of the sick, but the faith of the friends. Go read your Bible well. Not the faith of the sick, but the faith of the... Jesus had mercy upon this man. And he was healed. What am I saying? Our relationship sometimes will take us far. And our relationship sometimes will make us mark time. 20, 40 years, mark timing. All because we belong to one getate. Let me tell you, our mama, if the getate you are in, you are not growing, can you go and leave that getate immediately? Because we have hooked ourselves with people, instead of helping each other grow, we are helping each other die slowly. Relationships, my sister, can take you far and can make us obtain honor. The, fa the four friends, when they took that man, Jesus had, uh, Jesus had compassion. But sometimes you find we get mad to the people that the Lord brings to carry our destiny all into our favors. How? Go read Genesis 16, 7 to 10, and you'll understand one woman. Let us praise be to the name of the Lord. One woman called Hagar. We love her so much. Before she cried, before she was given water, 
she was given instruction to go back and apologize. Get that revelation? Before she was given water to give the baby, there was an instruction to go back to Sarah and apologize. Hako wa mama hamupendi kuhubiriwa. Especially if you know you are number two or you are side chick, and I believe they are not here today. Tread well, rest Sarah is waiting for the apology. That is on a lighter note. Tread well, Sarah has labored enough. Tread well. This woman, Haggai, she forgot it is Sarah who gave her the permission to give birth with the husband. And she decided now, I am so mad with this family, especially this woman, and I will live with my son. Uh-huh. She left. Then the Lord, because he's not a respecter of any human being, the Lord made Hagar to go into the wilderness, and there is, was no water. And she decided, how will it get? Hey, Bura, Bura, the baby, Nini, now the angel came. Hagar, what are you doing? Oh, we have been here. I was mad. I left. Na, 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 na. And she was told, come on, Sarah, Haggai. Go back to Sarah and make apology. Hallelujah. For some of us here to obtain this favor, there are some people you need to look for and call and say sorry. I messed up with your family. I messed up with your finances. Now I am struggling financially. I have decided to make peace with you. Toira ne ore ato kore hana madire mare ata go tunire. To dokuma da go tunya dire dayo. There are some graces you don't joke around with. Check in your record. Who is that person who is crying because of your behavior? Are we together, church? Before you lift hands, God show me favor. The angel says, oh God, you can be shown favor. But Mrs. Kamau is wailing 24-7. Just look for Mrs. Kamau fast. I know there is no amen there, but it is true. Relationships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Relationships are tough. When you enter into relating with anyone, Think so much. Who you mtu ameletu wakufanya nini? And if in any case you have messed so much, and especially, I am not threatening anyone for heavenly sake, but if you are messed up with an authority, be it a mchungaji, somebody who is in authority, my sister, my brother, before you pray for favor, ask God to create a way for you to make peace. Haggai could not receive water before apology. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Lakini sisi tunataka pokea ni kipari kwa jina la Yesu. Yes, tutapokea. Lakini lazima tulainishe mambo. And finally, the impartation. We can activate favor through impartation. By the look of what my sister is doing, I envy her. I desire to be like her. I get impartation. How I might I'll decide to honor through giving her something, and I'll get impartation. And finally, provoking prayers. Favor provoking prayers. How? Always confess favor. Psalm 68, 19. Go read. Romans 4, 17. Psalm 23, 6. I always make a declaration before you complain for Unga Imepanda Bay. Make a declaration for who you want to become. Every now and every minute, even your business, have those biblical declarations. Ah, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall do when they be follow me. I will not leave the church, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Become a crazy faith carrier before you bite and lose demons. Declare what you want to become. Hallelujah. Before you run for deliverance and service, first declare what you want to become. And that is favor provoking prayer. And with those few words, or rather, few points, I want to confirm that. The unusual kindness.
the unusual acceptance, the unusual access is all that we desire. Shall we rise up for a word of prayer? The unusual one, God. God, you know I've been looking for this promotion for long, God. In my working place, every year they get promoted, I am remaining the same position. God, all I need is unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, and unusual access. And when God will do this to me, I will not be careless. I will remain faithful. Just open up your mouth and prophesy to your life. You are the best prophet of your life. Heaven honors the words of your mouth. For the Bible says, from the bottom of our hearts, the mouth speaketh. And wherever you speak, heaven just do a stamping. And everything is well taken care of. Just tell the Lord to give you from this particular day unusual kindness. Those that are calling your blessings and your money. Them that are calling your gift and packages. Whoever is calling you are everything the Lord wants to give you because it is with somebody. God, let there not be peace as it was for the issue to Mordecai. The king could not sleep until Mordecai was shown a new sort of kindness. May it be so for us today in Jesus' name. May you sail in the unusual kindness of the Lord. May people call you from far and wide. May generations to generation look for you. May you receive the phone calls for you to be shown unusual kindness. I pray today for the unusual acceptance. Wherever you are exercising rejection, I bind and rebuke the spirit of rejection. I cast the spirit of rejection. Whoever carried your rejection, whoever mentioned rejection in you, I command in the realm of the spirit, rejection is not your portion. You will have unusual acceptance. They will accept you in that family. They will accept you in that village. They will accept you in that estate. They will accept you in that company. For you carry the unusual acceptance. And I pray finally for the unusual access. Father, I know in our service today, there are those that are meant from the spiritual realm to be members who are senior in this government. And the devil is joking around with their blessings. I come to confirm in the realm of the spirit, it is the season to be shown unusual access. You will get access to any office that you knock. I say you will get access to any office that you knock. There is no man, no person to block you. I address the gatekeepers. I address the men on influence. I address the men of power to give you access. Lord, we pray. It shall be so in Jesus' name. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Some are carrying their CVs all the day long, God. But they have been rejected. But today, I arise in the realm of the Spirit. By the grace and the anointing bestowed upon me by the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray it is a season of favor. These people will experience unusual blessings, unusual visitations, unusual blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you because the moment you'll do this, Father, we will not forget you. We will get back to the altar and say thank you so much. And not only saying thank you, we will live for you. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. You might be here and you're not born again. You might be here and you're not born again. Our time is gone in five minutes now. And you'd love to accept Christ as your pastor or savior. Unusual welcome in the kingdom of God. Are you fair? And you would suggest today is my day. As I get the favors, many first of all, have the relationship with this Jesus. Just raise up your hand. By the show of your hand, kindly if you are there. And you are saying, this is my day. Just raise up your hand. And we, go, we are going to pray together. 
unayo moja anasema siku yangu ni leo Mungu niokoe na unikomboe nyosha mkono wako juu And Father we thank you for this wonderful service As your people live we are living blessed of you We are living people my father that nobody will reject us wherever we shall be from today even tomorrow in our working places there will be unusual favors the threats and intimidations my father will not be, will not be there any longer because this is the day to unblock the wells in jesus name do we pray may the lord god bless you and have a super week of your seats we, we we really thank god there is nothing there is nothing to add to that we need to dwell in favor hallelujah we need to dwell in favor hallelujah and i pray you organize your life as the the woman of god has said so that you can give honor to whoever honor is due hallelujah you can live in integrity hallelujah and build relationships maybe the even people you need to to cut out of your relationship list so that you can be able to see God. I want us to prepare ourselves for the worship of giving to the Lord. Um, those that have tithes and offerings so that you're able to move forward as uh, the deacons organize our our situation here to allow us to, to do that very, very quickly because of uh, because of time. If you have your tithe and you're, and you're ready, please come forward. We want to receive it. And... and um, hold your offering and then we can be able to you know, stand up and then be able to pray. Let's do it very quickly because of time. If you're coming, please come boldly. Come confidently. Come because it is worship. So we are able to pray and uh, that we continue to dwell in favor. The rest of us can be upstanding. Amen. So let's bow then and we pray. Father, we thank you. And bless you, God Almighty, this morning. We thank you for your visitation in this sanctuary, O oh God. Now, King of all glory, we are ready to worship you with those things that you've given us, O oh Father Almighty. And we pray in the name of Jesus as we release these gifts, O oh Father, to you, O oh King of all glory. Would you enlarge our territories, O oh God? Would our labor return a profit, King of all glory? We want to receive the uh, tithes, O oh God Almighty, that people have brought into your house, O oh Father. Your word has said that we declare a blessing over them, O oh Father. So we declare the blessing of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow over your lives in the name of Jesus. That you may go out and come back with things. That you may conquer lands. That you may conquer businesses. That you may grow and be established. That favor may be a portion in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, that it is for the sake of the gospel that you've asked us to partner with you. It is such an honor and such a privilege, God Almighty. And as we do this, O Father Almighty, releasing that which you've given us, O God, in partnership with you, O Father, would you come now, O God Almighty, and cause us to exist in a realm that has favor, in the place of possibility, O God. Those things that have been difficult for us, Heavenly Father, by this worship that we give you this morning, my Father, make it easy for us to conquer things, O God, to overcome things, King of all glory, and to be victorious in the things that you have in our hearts, O King of all glory. We pray that you may bless us and enlarge us and walk with us, King of all glory, that we dwell in favor. We worship you, God, and we praise you, and this is our prayer that we pray in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you as you give.
Worship night. They have christened it uh, to, tonight. We gather. It's happening tomorrow at 6 to 8 8.30. I think it's 8.30. Here in the main sanctuary, please. If you're able to attend that worship, worship experience, it'll be good for you to be there. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's ask the leader of the service. Praise God. My name is Rosemary Wajiro. Reading the service today is Christian edu Education. Uh, in the patronage of our elder Joyce Chege from the Christian desk, we wish you a blessed week. Let us appreciate. Appreciate them. Amen. Are, are they smart? Are they smart? Yes. Uh, this this group is is, is is nice. What what color is this that you are wearing today? What what what? what? Mustard. Oh yeah, mustard and black. Did you even know there was mustard and black? <laughs> all all we know is move. Oh, the thought it is move. And move is a color. So let's appreciate them again for choosing to be coordinated. We love what you're doing, the way you're leading us, even in that desk of Christian education, and we love the way you dress today. You guys are awesome. The Lord really, really bless you. Let's join up with the words of the grace and now. And the grace, the grace of our Lord, of Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now.